Hello, I'm Lou and welcome back to Open Up The Cloud. So one thing that I've learned from talking to different people getting into the cloud industry is that it's very difficult on the outside to understand some of the industry practices, particularly when it comes to interviews or building out your own projects. It can be difficult and challenging to know what type of detail to add into those projects, what complexity to add, and what different practices to apply, which is why I wanted to run this series, You Don't Know What You Don't Know About Cloud. And this first topic that we're gonna talk about in this video is about database migrations. I'll talk you through some of the theory in how database migrations work, and then in the second part, what do is actually show you some code. Now in the database world there are broadly two different types of database. We have a schema or SQL database and we have no, no schema or no SQL database. What we're going to do is we're going to talk mostly about a schema database in this case. Database migration is basically where you take from one schema in a database to another. Now you can think about a schema of a database quite like an Excel spreadsheet, rows or columns that have different data types. Maybe you've had currency, maybe you have had number fields and that's exactly the same as for instance within a SQL database or a, a database with a schema. Now now, if you want to go from one version to the next, you're going to need ultimately a database migration, but you can do that manually. You could log into the server or into the database and you could run a patch to change a column, add a row. However, that's one of those things that doesn't really happen in the commercial setting. What you will have is actually what is known as automated migrations. Database migrations come in many different shapes and forms. There are many different libraries and packages that you can use for applying a database migration. Let's talk a little bit about some of the different common things you'll see. One of those is the potential to go up versions and down versions. Now you might have, let's say 70 different versions of your database and you will want the ability to go from version 0 to version 70 and also interestingly as well sometimes you will have the ability to go down versions so you'll be able to downgrade let's say from version 70 to version 69 68 etc that could be useful if you deploy into your production environment and then you want to roll back to a previous version because there's an incident now one other tricky thing about database migrations is also this idea of state now you will need to know for instance what version that your, your database is running what version of schema that it's on so one way that you can do that is by actually having a table within the data database itself, like a meta table that tells you what version the database is on. And finally, one of the additional features that you can sometimes find in a database migration tool is this idea of a lock. So you obviously don't want to run two different schema migrations at the same time. And that can basically be done in the same way that the migration file or the state file can be done, where you have another metadata table where you basically just say when the database is in a lock state or when it's not. So if you're anything like me, you probably want to see this in action. That's probably a lot of theory and maybe that's a little bit hard for you to hold in your head. But let's go ahead and take a look at how that would look in the code. This repo is open up the cloud db-migration-demo and that's where the code is going to live. So really we've got three different technologies within here that we're going to look at today. This library called ConnectJS. That's a JS based open source library that's going to do our actual migration scripts. It's going to manage all of those state files that I mentioned. It's going to give us some commands so we can migrate our database up and down. Then what we're also going to use is this Postgres container so that's using docker hub which is an open source sql database you can use any different type of database here you could use mysql you could use something on rds etc it doesn't really matter and then the final technology that we'll be using is gitpod if you want to follow along with this demo all you have to do is go sign up for gitpod it's entirely free and then click the link in that repo and then it's going to set everything up docker and xjs npm install it's going to do all that stuff for you let me go ahead and show you if you click on this link over here opening gitpod that's going to take you directly into gitpod which is going to look like this and this opens you up like a vs code environment and you've got all of the different files from that repo over here as well. Now, what we've got here is three different terminals. This one on the left-hand side, basically is running what is a docker compose up command, and that's gonna start a docker container that's running Postgres on this environment. What I'm gonna do though, is I'm actually gonna get rid of that view, just hide it for now. What we're gonna do now here is use this psql command to explore our database and have a look inside it. So if I go ahead and I just type in password here, which is the default password for this Postgres installation, and then what I'm gonna do is also do slash c, and that's going to connect me to the Postgres table. And I'm going to do slash DT, which should list any data tables within this Postgres installation. Now it says at the moment does not find any relations. Now that's because this is an entirely clean database and there's no tables already in there. Now what I've done is I've created this migration that you can see up here and you'll see there's two different functions. So you've got an up function and a down function. Now the up function is basically when you're going up a version, it's going to run this script. And when, when you're going down a version, it's going to run this script. So what that does is basically one will create the, in this case it's a table, a user table, and then when you go down it's going to delete or remove the user's table. That's useful in the previous scenario that we talked about before if you have like a production outage and you want to go up and down a database schema. So let me go ahead and run my next command. Now I've already installed next and everything and the way I'm going to run that is using mpx which is basically a way of running 
packages in npm and i'm going to run npx next migrate up now if i go ahead and hit that that says it's using my development environment which is just the environment on this machine and it's going to say that we have basically run this following migration now that it's run that migration what i can do is i can go over back into my postgres and i can do the slash dt command again aha uh -huh. now what we see is we've got three different tables that have been created now this is our users table that's a table that we created up here in our up command and then we have these two different metadata tables here called next migrations and next migrations lock now if i go ahead and go select all from migrations and have a look at that you can see within that table we actually have the name of my version file that's the one over here that i created and we have the time in which that patch was applied now that's really cool and that's just our metadata file that's going to keep the track of when we've done our database migration what i can do is i can now go and run migrate up again and what we're going to see is it's already up to date so if you're running a migration script on an existing database that's been migrated nothing's going to happen that's really useful if you're doing this as part of like a ci cd pipeline and you're rerunning that script script over time because it's not going to get your environment into a bad state. So now if I go ahead and change this now and do next migrate down, what it's going to do is run this down command and we're going to go back a version in terms of the schema. So we're going to again run this patch and then we're going to go back down. Now if again if I run here by select all from next migrations, interesting now you can see that that next migration has disappeared and we've actually now gone back to our base database instance which basically has nothing in it. Now if I do a slash dt, what we'll now see is those metadata files are there but the user this table is no longer there because part of our down function we actually removed that as well so we dropped that table and we went back to the base of the database so there you have it really that is a database migration and a really simple example as i said if you want to you can go in here and click open in git pod and that so have a go at that and hopefully after this video you will have a better understanding of what a database migration is and some of the difficulties that you might have in a commercial environment go ahead and actually use that in one of your projects and then when you come to an interview or something like that you can talk about what a database migration is in quite a lot of detail and talk about the ins and outs and the trade-off. I'll hopefully see you in the next video.